What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. Got to be quiet because I'm trying to rock the babies to sleep. All right. Today's the day, y'all. Today's the day we do the ultimate battle of the best large camp knife. Woo-wee. So I told you guys in a, in a pre-video to get things going, we were going to do this. And what I wanted to do is get a bunch of different great camp knives and um, great large camp knives and pit them together one by one, go over them. We will see what I feel and what I can relate to you would be the best option for a large camp knife, at least out of um, these seven here. So that's what we are going to do and we will figure it out. And I guarantee you, that out of these seven, there is one that you will find that you would just love to have anyway and you think would be probably a top-notch um, camp knife for you. So let's go over all of the knives first. And the reason I chose these seven is because every single one of them has a different kind of handle. And um, when you're talking about different handles and different scales... Um, it can be night and day, huge difference in how it works. Now, normally when I do a big versus like this, I get on the computer and I pull up some of the, um, the videos that I already did, the individual videos, and I will show you clips and pieces of me using these knives and, and doing all this stuff. The problem is with seven knives, if I did that, this video would be like an hour and a half long. And you guys would feel like after listening to this guy for that long. So we're not going to do that. What we will do is um, we will go over these and then um, either we'll take all seven out or maybe maybe the top three and we'll just go to the one inch forest and we'll hack away. Um, that way we can try and keep this down to a, uh, a length to where you could want to watch it. <laughs> um, so... With that said, anything you need to know about why a camp knife is good and what it's good for and, and this and that, we're going to go over. So it's going to be a little bit of this, but I'm going to show you all these blades. So let's go over this first. So the first one in my hand happens to be the Becker BK9. Before I get into the knife, let's go over the sheath. This is the stock sheath, and they are horrible. I hate Becker sheaths. I mean... It's not that it's a bad sheath. It's just such a, not a great sheath. You do have a utility pouch. And in this utility pouch, um, let's see, you have nothing. Well, I don't have anything in there. But you do have a slot for a neck knife that you can put in there that's actually made to go in there. But that's sold separately. So they give you a spot for it, but not the it to cover the spot. I don't really like that. That's kind of that's kind of dumb. Uh, what I do like is that it is a um, it has the ability to take it on and off the belt without having to take off the belt. That's good, and it has Molly attachments on the rear. That is good. It has leg tie downs. That is good. Um, outside of that, there's nothing special about this sheath. These are completely generic. Just throw it in there sheaths. Not pleased. I'm not pleased with those sheaths. One of the other things I am not pleased with, and I'm not going to tell you the steel because that's awesome. Um, as far as the steel on the BKs, this is still a K bar, man. And the steel is so proper. Now, the scales, these are synthetic. And I know that because I made these scales. These are these are my own. So you can see I, I left the, um, the hammer end out, um, but I did my... I did my quasi mixy tiger pattern, um, and it is so awesome. The reason I did that is because the original scales that come on the BK series knives are horrible. Contoured well, they're shaped nice, it's got a good feel in the hand, but they're all plastic, and it's not even like a nice soft plastic, like a rubbery plastic. No, they are just straight up horrible hard like holding your remote plastic it is not not very good in the hand so when you're talking about um 
camp situations, you're talking about camping in the in the rain, in the heat, in the cold, in the you know what I mean. You you have all kinds in the mud. You have all kinds of different situations and scenarios that you might be in. And when you're talking about wetness and when you're talking about you know uh, cold, plastic is not good. Um, and I mean the contouring on this one is so much nicer. But um, but uh, yeah, you're, you're just you're not looking at good. So scale for scale, out of all of the um, the great camp knives. Even though it's a K-Bar, the other K-Bar, horrible handle for a camp knife, um, I still say just hard, plain plastic is the worst, so I had to change mine. I still have my BK7 with the originals on it, but I have I have um, some wrap around it, and I'm going to eventually just make scales for that one too, because the knives are too good to have crappy handles on. So, first one, right here. Let's go over a couple of measurements. Let's just go over that real quick. We are looking at 14 and a half ish, maybe a little bit more than that. And we're looking at just over nine inches on the blade. Now my parameter said a 10 inch blade. This one to the Ricasso is 10 inches. So you have a 10 inch cutting blade and then it's like a quarter inch Ricasso. So I threw it in anyway, even though it's slightly above the parameters, we'll get into that. Um, so now blade thickness, we are looking at, uh, right there, like almost three sixteenths, almost. So it's got decent heft. It's not a very thick blade, um, but it's decent. And a lot of times you just, if it's heat treated right, then you're not going to need a big fat blade. So, and this thing, I got to tell you, the steel is right. So this is a very, very good steel. Edge retention on this is amazing. It is black coated. It helps prevent against rust. Now, a lot of people have this big thing about the black coating because they say, oh, it causes cancer, blah, 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 blah. Do you know how much sliced tomato or whatever you're going to have to make before this causes cancer in your body? People don't freak out just because they say, oh, the, the black coating is cancerous. You would need to literally take chips of this stuff and just feed it to yourself 24-7 before you hit a dangerous level. So don't freak out about that. The coating is not going to kill you. Um, that's just something the wanwans are saying about different things. So don't freak out about that. Overall, great heft, great feel. The, um, the, the blade swings around in such a perfect way. It's nice and light in the handle, nice and heavy in the blade, exactly how you want a chopper batoning it has um it has great great uh, batoning capabilities it has good penetration with the swedge um this is an all-around badass this is an all-around badass whether i'm not crazy about this and whether i'm not crazy about the original scales it doesn't matter also ambidextrous so i do appreciate that that is the becker bk9 next we're going to get into one of the prettiest knives one of the prettiest knives. What's the model number on this guy? I always forget. This is the HR5032. Now remember, I have done individual videos on every single one of these knives. So if you want to see a full in-depth video on these knives, if you're looking and you're saying, okay, let's listen to what he's saying. Let's look at the parameters. Let's look at the look and say, oh, I really like that. I wish I could see more on that knife. That's great. Just, just look up um, my reviews on the knife. How is the sheath on the Hen and Rooster? Just like all Hen and Rooster sheaths. Oh, it's perfect, man. It is leather. There's no lanyard hole, no leg strap hole. Um, and there's nothing here for attachments. You're not going to put cordage on here. And it's not, you can't, this isn't Molly adaptable. You can obviously attach it. But that's the one drawback on a leather sheath is generally they're made just to be a leather sheath. However, I love a leather sheath. So, you can always have that kind of stuff attached to your gear without needing the leather sheath. So let's get into the Hen and Rooster. This thing is gorgeous. This thing is gorgeous. You have this nice um, beak right here that holds on your hand really well. Um, you can even hang it from a tree limb if you need to. Um, the stag is real stag. It's real bone. It's real beautiful. The... Um, beautiful spear point is absolutely gorgeous the swedge is done right we are looking at 
size wise we are looking at a just under nine and a half in the blade and you're looking at around just under 14 and a half in the length as far as width i mean thickness we're looking at an eighth inch blade and it is a super beautiful beautiful knife um comfortable in the hand yes if you have big hands especially uh you will get um because this is natural stag you will get some corners right here and so it could feel square in the hand. The one good thing about square in the hand is square doesn't roll. So if I grab it and I twist, that thing's not turning in my hand at all. Note to self. Um, so the hen and rooster is great. Now, um, will it chop and baton and, and slice and dice and all that? Absolutely. My individual video on this shows that. So again... The videos are done on these, and this is, I said, the 5032, HR5032, um, and even if you couldn't find this model, all the hen and rooster knives just work. You see how beautiful and shiny that is? That means if you need to SOS some planes because you're stuck, that right there will do it. It is a beautifully done blade. So, um, that's the hen and rooster. We're going we're gonna to get more into these knives. Also... Good thing about the the hen and roosters, I do believe this sheath is also because it's a spear point ambidextrous. Awesome! You gotta love an ambidextrous leather sheath. And the good thing about wearing it on your left, if if you're a right-handed gunkeeper, especially wearing it on your left, is the strap goes across the spine. So when you pull it out, you don't scratch up your strap. That's perfect. And if you're a lefty like me, and you want to carry it on your left. Boom. Beautiful. All right, next, let's get into this one that we've been talking about. The K-Bar Big Brother. Whew. All right. Yes, man, this is a great leather sheath. I love this sheath. This one does have a drain hole slash um, lanyard hole right there, which is good. Um, and of, just like the other one, there's nothing else. Just a good quality leather sheath. Let's get into this. Speaking of good quality leather, the handle is great quality leather. The problem is this. The handle is round. I'm squeezing my hand on there. It takes nothing to turn this blade. So for chopping and striking, the blade, when caught at an angle, will turn and you will lose some of your chop. And if you're losing some of your chop, that means you're gaining more time to get the chop done. And if it wasn't for the handle department at the people at um, K-Bar, their knives would be just the best in the world. But for some reason, they do not like making great handles. Um, and I know everybody, oh, the, the, the USMC and blah, 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 blah. No, it's, it's a classic. I get it. It's great. Blah, blah, blah. I did videos on it. The knife is wonderful, but the grips still suck. I don't care what you say. The grips suck. And for knives that are supposed to be fighting knives, luckily, this one's big enough to where the blade can make up for some of this weight, but having all that weight in the rear on that hammer end for a fighting knife and a chopper, um, the weight in the rear takes away the weight in the front, which means you have less chop, right? Less weight to go behind the chop, which means now you're expending more energy to do what you could do on a knife with just as a heavier blade. So, or weight, better weight dist uh, distribution. The steel itself though, whoo! This is fantastic, man. Stays sharp, stays strong, stays long. It's a beautiful knife. We're looking at about a nine and a quarter inch blade here. And you're looking at about a 14 and a quarter inch overall. And you have a, um, a flat serrate, which means stays sharper longer. Very smart. The one thing that this knife sucks for is batoning. Um, you have a full swedge that goes all the way until the serrade, giving you about a half inch of flat blade where you cannot hit a baton with it. Can you baton with it? I did it in the video. Look at the video. Um, yeah, you can do it, but you tear them batons up and you're going to have to crack through a lot of batons. So as far as a large camp knife being the greatest, this steel is unstoppable, but... Can it be the greatest? We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We'll figure it all out. Next, 
the Condor Moon Shiner. Tightest sheath I've ever owned. And again, oh, an amazing leather. I love it. Love the leather sheets. Um, now, here's the deal with the Condor. Um, most of these are 1095, except for the German stainless and the hen and rooster. This one, what is it? 1075, I think. Um, so you'll see the oxidation on there. This one, no matter, you can see the oil. I, I keep them oiled in my sheets. Um, but this one, you must clean the crap out of these because the, um, this steel um, beyond all the others will begin to rust and oxidize way faster. However, look at this blade. It is a beast. And you can see that it gets a lot of use. Uh, this, it took me, when I first got it, it was so tight. I mean, so unbelievably tight. I thought it just sat in there like that. And I'm like, it's got a dangler. So when that turns, that's just going to fall out. And then, and it, it was, it was so tight. In fact, that it didn't measure up. It was like, you see where that whole, that was like way over there. It was press R and I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. And then one day I was going over the video and I had it laying across the sheath. And I said, wait a second, there's a whole lot of sheath there. That's got a wedge in there. So after working it, um, I finally realized that it is a friction hold um, and it's very good. But once you get it in um, and worked in, then this sheath is fantastic. So, all right, let's get out of the sheath. Let's get into the ruler. The tape measurer. I love the shape of this thing, man. I love it. All right, so here we are. We are looking at about, you know, nine inches with 14 and three quarter overall. And we have on this one a wood handle. So we have what started with plastic is now synthetic, but we'll say plastic on the Becker. You have round leather on the K bar, and we had stag on the hen and rooster. Now we get into wood. Um, the one bad thing about the wood is right there. You can see there's a chip in there and I broke this piece off and then I had to reaffix it. I don't know if you can see it because I did such a good job. There it is. See, yeah, it's glued on right there. So one problem with the wood is it's easy to chip. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people complain about this because they say, oh, the handle's way too big. But they, they're saying, oh, you slide around like this and like this. This thing fits perfect in my hand. If you have very big hands, this thing is going to fit really nice in your hand. If you have small hands, you might you might have a complaint. But what it does is it offers you the ability to hang low, sweet chariot. Swing it from way at the bottom and get an okay grip because you have so much length beyond that. And you have such a great um, swell at the end to where you can really catch on to that and start swinging it. Um, let's see, let's see, this is, I think, the same thickness, a one-eighth as the, as the BK and the Hen and Rooster, same thickness, but look at the shape on this guy, it's just a mean, mean knife, mean, mean knife, oh, 90 degree spine, the, the Becker doesn't really count, I mean, uh, the K-Bar, Big Brother doesn't really count because it doesn't really have too much of a spine, um, and the other, all, all those so far have had 90 degree spines, so you can catch spark. However, you are better off to use the end of your blade to do that with. Next, I hate these sheaths more than any other sheath that comes on a knife stock. First of all, you don't need two areas of strap because when you're talking about being in the woods and you need a quick deploy, you need to do something, having to go through two, this is not good. Now it does have molly attachment on the rear. It does have leg strap right there. There is no additional pouching. There's for some reason two lockdown methods, which makes this one unneeded. But you can see that this does turn saying, oh good, that means it's ambidextrous. The problem is there's only one um, side of a handguard. So even if you switch to the other side, it's not holding on to anything. So that becomes useless unless you have it on the blade side, which can cut open your strap. So that is just a horrible, horrible design, Ontario. Not a fan of that. I am a fan of this, however. This is the SP5, I believe it's called. Yeah, this is the SP5. And again, a knife that gets a lot of use. Um, I was not very, um, like, when I looked at the shape, I was like, eh, hey, kind of ugly. You know what I mean? It's really thin, and then it just kind of, Hangs out, but I have to say that this is a working blade. 
This thing really works. It chops really well. It cuts really well. It batons really well. Everything it does is good. So, so, so far that I found, and, and you'll see in the videos, when you watch these videos, um, it's been put through the ringer. So we're looking at about 15 inches and 10 inches in the blade, making this the second longest um, blade that we are working with. And it is all of that. It is all of that. And it is a pretty thick blade. Uh, I'm a lefty. Let's just try and switch hands. All right. So we are looking at the same. Oh, it's the same thickness as the Becker. So we are looking at, whoop, uh, I think, 3 16 And um, it is all of that. It's nice and thick. It rides well. Um, I don't like how skinny it is here. Um, I think they could have maintained this longer through the knife and then went up with that curve at the end. But instead, they just put the belly way, way forward. You can see where the belly is. Instead of being here, the belly is here. That's just kind of crazy to me. But this swedge is done so nice that you have forward slash back slash capabilities. And um, in defensive mode, especially out camping and you got some wild animals, you know, going back and forth and being able to cut and reverse along with going forward is a very good thing, but we will get into that. So, and the handle on this one is like a rubber. It's a hard rubber. Um, and we will get into why everything is good and bad. Whoo wee All right, the Cold Steel Trailmaster. Oh, this thing is a beast. So now this one has a secure X sheath. Tons tons of um lashing points um you can hook up ferro rods and striggers and all this kind of crap and you can put in um you can attach cord anywhere to this you have a leg tie down area it is ambidextrous the one thing i never like about the secure x's is the nylon that they use for the belt is just really floppy but that's what this is for so once that's there that doesn't matter anymore um and again you can take it on and off the belt without having to take off the belt these are very well-made sheaths. As plain looking as they are, this is a really, really good sheath. But what's better than the sheath is this. Now you have a Crayx handle, which is a rubber, but it's different than the rubber that's on the, um, on the Ontario. This one is a little better. It's just a really good handle. You do have a jumbo hollow pin, brassed, um, so you can put a, a strap in there. You do have a very nice handguard, big enough to catch your hand from slipping onto the blade, small enough to where if you need to get that blade around, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, the blade on this is classic. This is ultra classic, original, you know, sandbar fight, Jim Bowie style knife. That's what this is. This is just a really good looking knife as far as... Uh, as far as size, now, if you have smaller hands, this thing is going to fit you like a glove. Smaller hands are better than bigger hands on this. And even though I don't have smaller hands, I have jumbo hands, it still works because that handle is so well textured. So let's go into this one. We are looking at 9.5 in the blade and 14.5 overall. This is where this one gets scary different. It's double pretty much everything else. This is a full quarter inch blade and it provides heft and toughness again this one is not 1095 this is 01 okay so 1095 in every knife except the <clears throat> hen and rooster which is german stainless is like a 4116 you have the um condor which i believe is 1075 and you have this one, which is in 01, and then the last one is in 1095. So to give you a breakdown on the steel. In all steels, on these knives, every single one of them, awesome. They're all great. So there's not one where I'm going to tell you, oh, well, this steel sucks. The worst steel of all these is going to be in the Condor, and it's still great steel. So... That gives you a little something. If the worst steel is good steel, then you're doing something. Oh, so this badass sheath right here, drainage hole, right? Um, you'll notice 
this is nylon here, but it doesn't flap. That's what I wish um, Cold Steel would do, make a stiff nylon. Also, Molly compatible, ambidextrous. Um, it's got this lashing point right here. And then if you want, you can use the tie down. You don't need to. Um, I leave my tie down shut. You don't need to use the tie down. Um, but again, you can take it on and off. You have an additional lashing area. Um, you can put as much junk as you want on the end of this. And it is a um, friction holder, so it will stay in. This sheath is a great sheath. And as much as I'm a leather fan, I have to say that this is my favorite sheath out of all the sheaths here. As far as camp needs and necessities and, and the ability to attach things so you have less stuff to find, that sheath is just awesome. Essie does a really, really good job. Speaking of really good job, let's get into this really good job. This is the Essie Hoongloss, right? It's spelt jungless. Uh, right there. So it is a, uh, it is a, a, a knife. So, as you can tell, again, it's black coated, but you don't have to worry about the coating. You know, a lot of people freak out. So, we are looking at 10 inches cutting, and then you have another quarter inch, I was telling you, just right there. So, that's why I let it sit in this, in this category. I mean, if I didn't put this one in the category, who knows? It might be a little easier to, to go through them all. But we are looking at 16 and a half inches overall. You have a lanyard hole at the end with a hammer end for banging open rocks and geodes or other stuff like clams and mussels and things like that. Blur. Um, you do have a linen micarta grip, which is great. You do have a blade thickness. I think it's the same as like, let's see. Yeah, this is an eighth thick of 1095 the the thing is with this guy right here the heat treat and temperament on this full flat beauty is um is second to none they're just some of the best heat treats you're gonna find in a, in a knife um and they are 100 percent lifetime guaranteed if you have any issue you send it to them they send you back a new one no questions asked um now Let's, from this point, just get into handles. What makes the handle great? You have to be able to hold it wet with a glove, dry, empty-handed, um, cold, hot, muddy, dirty, everything, sandy. When it comes down to a wet grip, okay, this used to be plastic and the wet grip, not very good. Oh, man, I hate that blur. Um, not very good when you're talking about the Becker series. Handles in the cold, not very good. They get slick and they can hold on a nice little layer of ice in the really cold. So I had to change my grips because those were just not doing it for me. So stock knife, grips on here, no bueno. Is it the worst? Maybe not. Here, you have a good solid rubber grip. It's round, but it's not completely round. So this grip right here will keep your knife in your hand. And one of the best things about this one is in cold, in heat, and all that, you're still going to have a good grip. In the cold, it's going to feel a little harder. But in the heat, especially, this thing's going to be a little bit more tacky. And um, you are going to have ultimate gripping capabilities in hot weather situations with this grip. Does that make it the best grip? Not really. Um, when it's wet, it can be a little a little tackier. But the one thing is, if I turn, it's still going to turn. But just not as easy as the other one. This thing is so sharp, I almost went right through my hand doing that. Um, it's sharp. That's one thing you got to say that is lovely about that. That Ontario comes with an edge. So, so far, I would have to say... Of those two, this one, the Ontario is the better handle. So I'm gonna put that over there. So now we're gonna get into this guy right here. Another all weather grip. This thing is sun, rain, you know, cold, hot. 
It doesn't matter what, uh, what the weather conditions are. This grip will grip and it's going to feel good no matter what. And you'd think that with all these dimples, you're going to get hot spots. There's no way. This thing is just so well done um, that I would have to say that because it's squared, um, you are not getting any turning on this blade in your hand. So now we have this one, this one, and now this one. Out of these three, the best grip all around for weather conditions is going to be the cold steel. Let's move on. So now we're going to get into the Condor. Condor, very comfortable grip. The one thing that stinks is that it's a slick wood. Oh, that was easy. So spinning, even from the end, I can spin it. Spinning is going to be easy, easy in the hand. And one thing that that sucks about is just like with the um, with the the uh, the K bar is chopping. It can provide wiggle room that slows down your chopping. It slows down your projectivity and it creates a bad thing. Now, cold, hot, all that, um, it's wood. It's wood. If you've ever picked up a baseball bat when it's cold and wet, you know. That's why guys put tape on the end. Um, plain wood like this, where it's really well done and really smooth, isn't the greatest unless it's contoured really well. This one has nice contouring, but you can see from this point how very round it is, and that's where the problem is. If this had more shape to it, it might hold better. Um, you're not going to get cold spots and hot spots in cold and wet, wet uh, cold and hot weather, and that's a good thing because it's wood. It's just natural. But you are going to have some slickness, not due to the material, but due to the shaping. So I would say that it's better than stock for stock than the BK's plastic grip. So this one will go ahead of that one. Let's get into the stag on the hen and rooster. It's stag. It's stag. So the one good thing about stag is it's made to wear on somebody's head, right? Some, some animal wears it on their head. And they have to be outside in all kinds of weather. So this thing has to be tough and durable and capable in all kinds of weather. And that's one great thing about the stag. Now, here's what's bad is you have a lot of steel coming through here, which means in cold weather, you are going to feel a lot of that chill. Unless you're wearing gloves, if you're barehanded in the cold, you are going to get cold hands wielding a knife like this. If you're wearing gloves, even something simple like this, all that is gone. Now you have none of those problems. You have a very comfortable grip. It's going to stay, and because of all these little trenches, these natural trenches in here, water breaks away like on a good tire, on a good rain tire. Um, this is very, very good. It's a very stable grip. Um, I would definitely say it's better than this. I don't know if it's better than the Ontario. This rubber grip right here is really, really tacky. The only problem is the turning. This one isn't going to turn and because of that and because I know it's going to be durable no matter what I would have to say that if it came down to choosing between the Ontario and some people might think that's crazy or a bone grip I would take the bone but it's not as good as this it's not as good as this so that's that now we're going to get in to this one right here this one gets a bad rap from knife reviewers like me because we're honest a lot of people like to just you know put their nose right up the butt of k-bar and say you're k-bar so we're never going to say a bad word about you one of the greatest knife companies in the world one of the greatest blade steels in the world this stuff is fantastic this stuff is not i love you k-bar i swear to god i do but you need better handles. You just need better handles. And I know it's the classic, so these will never change, but you know, not all your knives have to have bad handles. It's just not the way. That pot belly handle, I had to trim down, right? So here it is. It's leather. It's round. When it's wet, it's slick. Um, heat, it's fine. No problems in the heat. Actually, the hotter, the better. Um, 
but wet, muddy, icy, cold, no good. Just not a good design because you are a coated leather. So it's just gonna get slick. And the more the coating wears off, like mine, you can see I use it. So a lot of that nice shiny coating is coming off. You see all these streaks right here? That's the leather. What happens when you get leather wet? It becomes like slimy. And uh, slimy equals slick. So as far as great camp blade, from here to here, it's one of the greatest ever made. I mean, that's competition right there. From here to here, I don't, I'm squeezing, squeezing, and it is too easy to turn that in my hand. That is not good for a camp knife. Not good. So as far as handles are concerned, this is the prettiest one, with, without a doubt. I think this is the nicest looking, but this is the worst large camp knife handle you can have out of the group. Just horrible handle. Bringing us to this handle, Micarta. Micarta is made specifically for all weather. You can see it's textured, right? This thing survives cold, it survives hot, it survives wet. As a matter of fact, wet, it's even grippier. You get more grip in the wet. And I am not going to turn or twist this thing in my hand because the shape, it is not round. You see the nice flat sides, it's called slab side. Right here is nice and flat. Right here is contoured, right here is contoured. Right here is contoured, it's round, it's not flat. Every bit of this handle is shaped to stay in the hand, no matter what the weather. Um, Micarta on a survival knife is the best stuff you can use. And when you're talking about this and this, both are phenomenal. But when it comes down to shape and contouring, this, obviously, you can see, has a lot more work put into it than that. So. Which knife has the best handle? This one right here. The Essi Hunglas has the best handle. Now, let's get to heat treat. And this is gonna be really short. This is gonna be really short. Um, what's got the best heat treats and the worst heat treats? I'm gonna say it, out of this group, Condor has the least good heat treat out of all of, I mean, not Condor, but Ontario. And this is fantastic. And, and this is the problem with these videos is you're going to hear it and you're going to say, oh man, that one's the worst one. The worst one is still better than most of your other knives. The worst heat treat in this group is better than most of your other knives. Condor and um, Ontario are the only two that I've ever taken a small, tiny chip in. The only two. I've swung these knives front to back, here to there. I mean, everywhere. These two steels, and this one, it's because it's more like a machete steel almost, just thicker. But even though it hasn't really had a chip, it's had more of like a uh, like a small fold, where where my my Ontario blades, like my uh, my Rat Seven, I took a little tiny chip in that. Um, the heat treat on Ontario out of all of these is probably the worst, but. This is phenomenally heat treated. Do not let me sell it short. Don't think of what I'm saying is, out of all of them, this one's bad. No, one just has to be better than the other, that's it. So this one, I would say, is the worst in heat treat. This one, I'm gonna say, is second. Um, even though I've never had a problem with it, um, I just know that the remaining blades are a little bit better. That, and that's it. There's nothing I can say negative about this. It's none of my hen and roosters have doled. None of them have chipped. None of them have folded. There's never been a problem with any of those. So, I mean, where do you go, right? So next, I know, the cold steel. The cold, you're saying, wait, but there's still more knives. How is the cold steel not the best? Because cold steel is phenomenal. But you can damage a cold steel before you will damage any K-Bar product. K-Bar steel is fantastic. I can't say which one is better because they're both the same. Um, this is the Becker, this is the regular K-Bar, both made by the same companies, both um, fantastic. The heat treat temperament on these is wonderful. So you're thinking, okay, you're done. 
Guys, it's really easy. The heat treat on the SE is one of the best on the planet. Between Tops and SE, and I wish I had a Tops blade I could have put in this one, but it just didn't meet the parameters. Um, and this one right here, heat treat is just absolutely phenomenal. So out of out of the three, we can comes down to which has the best sheath. My favorite sheath um, out of all these, well, my fav favorite sheath, as far as looks and all that, is probably this one. I love the look of that. It's between that and this, these are beautiful sheaths. But as far as we're talking about camp knives and what it takes to be a good camp knife, this thing has everything. So does this one, the difference being that. <laughs> that's it that's what separates these two is the fact that this has a cheaper nylon so the best sheath goes to this one second best sheath goes to this one third best sheath goes to oh that's a tie and I could put this one in as a tie as well but they come so damn tight you really have to work them and it's not as good as those but it's right around the corner and then I would say right here to right here, this being the last. So now we're gonna come down to um, blade finish, right? Blade finish, the worst finish of all is right here on the Condor. Worst finish of all. It's, um, and I love saying worst in a best video because there's no worst, but it's the worst out of these, you get it. So Condor comes in last place. Um, there's no other blade that I would really say worst finish, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The coatings and how fast do they rub off and, and wear and this and that. And I would have to say that the weaker coating is going to be on the Ontario so this would be my second to last. Just weaker coating, but it's not weak coating. Outside of that, you're gonna have your um, your K-Bar knives coatings. Um, they're actually fantastic. I've really never had a problem with those. Um, so those are gonna be next, just because they're great. They're great, there's really no problem, but are they the best? No, but are they fantastic? Yes, phenomenal. So there's that. Then, I'm gonna pull out the SE. And the only reason that this one is not as good as the others um, is because it, it's actually coated, right? And the blade isn't um, polished up like the other one. So while this one is good for non-reflective purposes and essentially what the, you know, what's supposed to be good is anything with a, with a rigid, like a bumpy feel to it, you're supposed to be able to strike a waterproof match against it if you have a really good match. If you have the cheap quality ones, it's not gonna work. But you should be able to take a match to these and light a match. Um, so coating, blade finish, comes down to these two. And I should probably unsnap it before I try to pull it out. You have Cold Steel and Hen and Rooster. And both are beautiful. And this one has a bunch of oil, so it's kind of hard for me to tell you. But as far as the best blade finish, Hen and Rooster, man, this is like chrome. This thing is like chrome. These, I use mine, so it's a little dirty. It's fingerprinted and all that. Let me see if I can wipe it down just a little bit and really give you an idea of um, just how absolutely perfect this coat, I just smeared some of it, but it's absolutely beautiful. The steel on these are gorgeous, and it's on pretty much all of their knives. It's the same way. So as far as, you know, how beautiful is my blade going to be and how beautiful is it going to look after the first 10 times I use it, this one's going to stay more beautiful longer. So that's that. So we got handles out of the way, we got sheaths out of the way, we got coatings out of the way, uh, we got heat treat out of the way. Um, what's next? What's next is 
what has the best ability to use to be a camp knife. And this is where I'm thinking I might break some down and remove some from the pack before we go out. That way, because we've already been doing this for about 40 minutes. So we're not bringing this one. I love it. It's one of my absolute favorite knives. This is one of my favorite fighting knives on the freaking planet. Love it. But when talking about a chopper, it lacks due to the weight. And it doesn't lack compared to any other knife. It just lacks compared to these knives. So this one is not going out because of the weight. That's the only thing is weight distribution. This one, same thing. It's heavier in the rear than it is the front. So where you lack is in the chop. It doesn't lack anywhere else. It's a great camper. I have a tom with it. I can cut food with it. I can do all my prep. I can build my shelters, everything. Nope, not gonna be there. So now we're, we're, we're down to five blades, which is going to be the get best camp knife. This one, even though it's crazy sharp, even though the handle is crazy well, um, when it comes down to total usage, um, it, it's very light in the front. Where they put the belly is enough to try and get the head around. But because this is so thick and so heavy, again, you are reduced weight in the front. So I have to not include that one in the final go. So now we're down to four knives and I wanna bring out the top three, like the best three that we can possibly bring out for this competition. So if I have to remove one, even though, guys, if you watch the individual videos, you're gonna say, there's no freaking way that these knives are not in the package because that individual video showed how amazing they are. They're that amazing, they really are. We're just putting them up against other amazing, amazing knives. This one, because of the slickness of the handle and no other reason, because as far as choppers, this is one of the best choppers, one of the best all around camp knives you'll ever need is right here. And I'm gonna tell you this again, this is one of the best all around camp knives you will ever need right here. The problem is one of the best means it's one of the best, not the best. So that leads me down to these three. The Essie Hunglas, the Cold Steel Trailmaster, and the Becker BK9, even though modified, these are the three that we're gonna break down. So finally, let's go chop something. All right, good to be outside. So let's take up, Ugh, this is already halved. So we're not gonna be batoning through a full log, but you will get what we're getting out of these and you will see what I'm talking about. We're gonna start with the cold steel. Tur rail master. All right, let's just punch right through this guy. Now, every single one of the knives that I did not choose will do this just as easy. Every single one of them. The only one that would give you a problem would be the K bar, only because you're going to be shredding through your batons a lot faster. So, this is just easy. I mean, simple simple kind of easy with this knife the 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 depth and thickness of this blade where you have two different things a thinner blade is going to slice through nice where a fat blade is going to split nice and this one is a great splitter the um the cold steel blade does a fantastic job at getting right through the wood easy so we're going to go from there Grab this one because it's closest to my hand. This is the BK, the BK9. All right, and again, we're just going to drop that in there right there and start whacking at it. And again, another fantastic knife made, just made to devour wood, made to slice and penetrate and open up and just get it done. It's a getter dunner without a damn doubt. This thing, um, I've actually done a lot of batoning with this knife um, for splitting firewood instead of using an ax because a lot of times, well, I'm an idiot and I'll do this in the house <laughs> near, the, near the fireplace 
And since I'm doing it in the house, I don't want to swing around an ax, so I want something um, more precise. So I grab a blade and that's why I do it inside. But you see, that is all no problem. And now we will grab the SE Hung Glass. Hey dogs, you better get back up here. All right, so the SE. And here we go. Just cake, 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 cake. Man, I could make nice boards with this. I could build a whole shelter just by making boards with the old Essie. Let's go this way. Let's see if we can't swing hard. Get it tapped in there. Yeah. I probably should have started with the blade farther in. Gave myself less to hit here. Now I'm going through a big knot. What I did is I crossed the um, crossed the grain. Ugh, just so we can get through that. All right there. Look at that. See that grain pattern change? Made it, made it nice and hard. It's all knots right there. So I figure if I'm going to take one of the baddest blad blades on the planet. Might as well throw it through a pretty bad piece of wood. Pretty bad, y'all. Devour. Devours wood. All right, so those are all great. That's what they do. If I was gonna say which one is better for batoning, none really. Um, this one, the cold steel, because of its thickness, absolutely splits the best. I'm gonna say that. Um, but which one is better? None. This one would have the slightest of slight edges due to its splitting. Roscoe! And um, that's literally, literally the only thing that I can say between the three of these as far as his ability to just give you firewood, to give you stuff that you know you need to use to survive. And I oh, found another, found another worm hiding out in one of these holes, these little worm holes. Let's say, oh, you know what I have on me? I have on me. Oh, the cold steel sling blade. Dug that little critter right out of there. See if he has a twin brother. Boop. Yeah, look at that. There's a couple of them guys hanging around. I'm always finding twins for some reason. Roscoe! Oh, damn dog. Smart as a stone. All right, hold on. Let me go get that dog. All right, chop action time. Chop action time. So we have the BK9. We have the cold steel trail master. And we have the Essie Hunglas. Obviously, the Hesse, the Essie, the Hesse, the Essie is longer. Um, and it's up on a hill. But let's see how devastating these choppers are. I have to say, ever since doing a custom handle, wow, just made it so much better. All right, so let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, my God, the bite is incredible. Just incredible. This is the Becker BK9. And chopping is a must in a camp knife as much as it is for food prep. Chopping is a must. And as you can see, the Becker is a chop master. It is a chop master. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Now, the one thing about the Becker that gets me is on the end, the open steel there, um, it, it just catches my finger a little bit with the ring. When I take off the ring, I don't have that, but I was too lazy to take it off. So here we go. This thing is a hole maker. I mean, that right there, the bite alone is insane. The Becker BK9 knocks holes in things. Now let's test the cold steel. I have, even with the stock grip on the um, on the Becker, that's in there. Um, 
you get more like hot spot type feeling um, than you will with this guy and less pinching because you have that coffin style, right? So it's just better on the hand. But as far as chopping, I mean, holy mackerel. I think, oh my God, I ugh, could barely get it out. Uh, that's the opposite of what men say. Um, this thing, I think, is a better chopper than the Becker. And I didn't realize that until just now, having chopped with this thing. Oh my God, the bite is incredible. So, wow. Chops for chops. I don't have chops. Um, I like this better. I like this better. So, as far as batoning, I like this slightly better just because of its girth was able to split the wood better. As far as chopping so far to these two, this one. So, right now, if I was going to um, axe one of them out, it would be this one. But is this one better than this one? Well, let's find out. All right. Check on the dogs, they're all still here. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that? Squeak. Now this one is a little bit longer and uh, you're able to generate more on a short swing just because of the length. Um, and as much as I love the Linden Micarta, I have to say that during the swing, this one feels better during the swing. But as far as ugh, devastation, man, this thing, the Essie, ugh, ugh, is devastating. I can barely get it out of the wood. Wow. So, that's crazy. That's crazy, boys and girls. Uh, let's take a look. Let's get a better look for you guys. You can see. I hope you can see. I hope I got you all in there. This thing, I took a bunch of wax with, and you can see it tore apart that wood. I mean, easy, easy tore apart this wood. But is the wood torn apart any more than this? No, no. This one actually, the grooves, you can see right here how deep it is, the depth from each hit, and the thickness from each hit. It was remarkable. And that was one of the things is that penetrating thickness, that overall heft, really, really changed the game when it came on chopping between this one and this one. But then this guy right here, there's the length, the speed it gets around, the edge profile, everything about this. You can see just picking pieces away from there where this one, see how all that, there's nothing flaking out. This one and this one, pieces are falling out. But look at the cavern here. It was able to just carve a nice saddle. And um, and this is, you know, the same swings. Same power, same swings. So now we have to decide before we finish it off, before we pick the best one out of these three, which would you choose to not be part of the final destination? And I'm going to put the Becker BK9 over there. Because right now, large camp knives, for me, and to try to explain to you guys which I would choose and why, so far it's between these two. Oh, man. And they are both in there. So we have the Essie Hoonglas and the Trailmaster. And I'm, when I started this competition, actually before I started it, when I was first pulling out the knives to show you what was going to be in the competition, um... I honestly thought that it would be pretty hard to beat this one. Um, and I knew the only competition would be this one. But this one feels and performs better than this in such a way that it's making this one start the question mark. And that is pretty crazy. I did not expect this knife to be feeling as well as it is by by using it and i mean it's just crazy let's take let's take one of these let's take one of these let's take one of these we'll put that over there do a little kitchen prep type stuff 
<laughs> it's like not even, you know, it's like when the only answer is yes, but you're still asking the question. <laughs> this one, for some reason, feels even smoother. Um, as far as, uh, like, kitchen-style chops, I don't know, man. I don't know. And here's the thing. I, I, I'm bringing it down to a couple choices. And just off of, you know, what I'm left with. But holy crap. Wow. This thing is so nice. This thing is so nice. This thing, this thing is so, so nice. Let's try this guy. <laughs> right away starts making these beautiful curls. They're all falling, but they're all there. Let's see if I can keep some on there. I mean, as far as as far as making feathers, you could you could see that they are both all day operators. All day operators. So uh, what I want to do now, because this video is getting way too long, I don't know. Here's <laughs> what can you what can you say that would that would change anything about uh oh about either of these. <laughs> went one one went over the log, one went under the log, stuck in just under the log. It's weird throwing it at a round a round target. That went right over you guys. That was almost the death of the camera. Oh, and the dog just ran through. I almost threw that while he came through. All right, so I might need an actual target. Might need a target. Let's see. I think I have one right over there. I think I have one. Yep. I knew I had one. Yep. See what happens when you get an actual target? Look how far away that thing is, too. All right, so the bite on the throw. Woo, wow, definitely goes to the Essie. That thing's in, actually. I don't know why I'm talking without bringing you. That was easy. So, you can just look at the penetrating ability on these throws. And that was the same throw, same distance. Uh, but... The Essie just bit a little bit more. Um, I don't know. As far as what these knives are good for, um, why you would want to choose either one as far as, you know, figuring out what is going to be the best, the absolute best camp knife. I don't know. I, you know, on a very small margin, I have to say the Essie. The SE's, the SE's length uh, just makes it a little bit more. The, um, the blade shape is just a little bit better um, for camp needs. Uh, the, as far as splitting wood, that, that uh, cold steel is just ridiculous. I mean, it is awesome. Uh, chopping that SE is just ridiculous. They're both ridiculous. The Becker is ridiculous. The, all the other stuff, the... Uh, but the hen and rooster, the condor, everything else are just ridiculous. They're all phenomenal. All are would be perfect camp knives. Literally, like you could get anything done with any of them. It just comes down to which one would be the best. Uh-oh, I think it's choosing. I think it's choosing. Watch it get stuck. Uh-oh. Look at that. Look at that. I didn't even have to do anything. Just talking about it. I'm about, to, I'm about to give you which one I think is the best. And this one just fell out. It just fell out. I'll tell you guys, if you want a perfect, amazing, great, phenomenal, large camp knife, get this. If you want the best, perfect, large, amazing, phenomenal camp knife, get this. Um, if you want a great, perfect, phenomenal, awesome camp knife, get any of the seven. But here we go. Cold Steel Trailmaster 
SE Hoonglass. These are probably two of the most perfect, common, commonly found camp knives that you're ever going to be able to buy off eBay. You know what I mean? Just knives that you could just look up anywhere, any day and find. These guys right here, just two of the best. And uh, for just hair splitting, I'm going to say this guy right here, this guy right here. And the fact that you can take on and off these scales really easy, this one's on there. You're not taking this off. But if you wanted to switch up your scales, you can. This one is just slightly more versatile. And uh, so, top camp knife. I know there's a bunch of Becker fans out there probably going to be like, that's bull. Becker's the greatest thing in the world. K-Bar makes the greatest knives in the world. Well, I'll tell you what. Until they make a better handle, they're not going to make the best. And until they can outperform these guys in chop tests they're they're just not going to be the best um this guy right here the se hoonglass guys if, if you've never ever picked one up if you've never swung one of these knives I'm telling you pick it up swing it enjoy it you will find out that this thing is an absolute beast and if you've never picked up a cold steel trail master if you've never held the thick beauty that lies inside this package right here telling you guys these are knives that you must feel to know you have to put them in your hand before you can realize yeah these are just awesome and uh you'll find out what i found out i'll tell you that if you go into it honestly you know if you go into it honestly saying okay i want to make sure what's the best is the best then this is what you're going to find out this thing is just ridiculous so that's it Best large camp knife right here wins the battle. The Essie Hunglas. Hoo ya! I'm Donnie B all day. Thrashing it. I love you guys. Till next video.